Good morning, everyone. Today is the 18th of October. It's Wednesday hop day. Hope you're having a good week so far. Mark is ready to begin reading Chapter 9 of the Holy Spirit by Arthur W. Pinkies in Part 1. If you want to obtain a copy of this book, you can go to Amazon.com and get yourself a copy. Holy Spirit Pink, Guardian Press. Chapter 9, The Work of the Spirit. is a great mistake to suppose the works of the Spirit are all of one kind, or that His operations preserve an equality is to degree. To insist that they are and do would be ascribed to most free in the third person of Godhead, that is enjoyed and exercised by men. There is variety in the activities of all voluntary agents. Even human beings are not confined to one sort of works, nor to the production of the same kind of effects and where they designed so to do. They moderate them as to decrease, as degrees according to their power and pleasure. Much more so it is with the Holy Spirit. The nature and kind of his works are regulated by his own will and purpose. Some he executes by the touch of his finger, so to speak, and others he puts forth his hand. While in yet others, as on the day of Pentecost, he lays bare his arm. He works by no necessity of his, he works by no necessity of his nature, but solely according to pleasure as well. 1 Corinthians 12:11. Many of the works of the Spirit, though perfect and kind and fully accomplishing their design, are wrought by him upon and within men who nevertheless are not saved. The Holy Spirit is present with, it, with many as to powerful operations with whom he is not present as to gracious and habitation. Or many are made partakers of him in his spiritual gift. Of him and his spiritual gifts, who are not made partakers of him and his saving grace. Matthew seven twenty two and twenty three. John Owen on Hebrews six four. The light which God furnishes different souls varies considerably both in kinds and degree. And degree. Nor should we be surprised at this in view of the adumbration in the natural world. How wide is the difference between the glimmering of the stars and the radiance of the full moon? That again from the shine of the midday sun. Equally wide is the gulf which separates the savage with his faint illumination of conscience for one who has been educated under Christian ministry. Greater still is the difference between the spiritual understanding of the wisest and regenerate professor and the feeblest faith in Christ that each has been a subject of the Spirit's operations. The Holy Spirit works in two ways and some men's hearts he works with restraining grace only. Restraining grace, though it will not save them, is enough to keep them from breaking out into the open and corrupt vices of which some men indulge who are totally left by their strength of spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, may work in men some good desires and feelings and yet have no design of saving them. But mark, none of these feelings are these are things that accompany salvation, for if so, they would be continued but he does not work um, um, nigh potently to save except the persons of his own elect whom he assuredly bringeth unto himself. I believe then that the trembling of Felix is to be accounted for by the straining grace by the Spirit quickening his conscience and making him tremble. See H. Version on Acts 24-25. Holy Spirit has been robbed of much of his distinctive glory through Christians failing to receive his very workings and concluding the operations of the blessed Spirit are confined unto God's elect. They have been hindered from offering to him the praise which is his due for keeping this wicked world a fit place for them to live in. Few today realize how much the children of God owe the third person the Trinity for, for holding to unleash the children of the devil, and preventing them from utterly consuming Christ's church on earth. It's true there are comparably few texts which specifically refer to the distinctive person of the Spirit as reign over the wicked, but once it is seen that it is 
that in the divine economy all is from God the Father, all is through God the Son, and all is by God the Spirit. Each is given his proper and separate place in our hearts and thoughts. Let us then now point out a few of the Spirit's general and inferior operations in the non elect to distinguish from a special and superior works from the redeemed and restrain evil. God should leave men absolute to their own natural corruption. The power of Satan should fully deserve to be as he will in hell as he would now, but for the sake of his elect. All show of goodness and morality would be entirely banished from the earth. Men would grow past view and in sin and wickedness would swiftly entirely swallow up the whole world. This is abundantly clear from Genesis 6, 3, 4, 5, and 12, but he who restrained the fierce fiery furnace of Babylon without quenching it, he who prevented the waters of the Red Sea from flowing without changing their nature, now hinders the workings of natural corruption without mortifying it. Vows the world is, we have abundant cause to adore and praise the Holy Spirit. It is not a thousand times worse. The world hates the people of God. John 15:19. Why then does it not devour them? What is it that holds back the enmity of the wicked against the righteous? Nothing but the restraining power of the Holy Spirit. In Psalms 1401-3, we find a fearful picture of the utter depravity of the human race that in verse 4 the psalmist acts have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat at my people as they eat bread and call on upon the Lord to which answer is made there were they in great fear for God's is in the generation of the righteous verse 5 is the Holy Spirit who places a great fear within them to keep them back from many outrages against God's people he curbs her mouth so completely of the reprobate shackled by his almighty hand that Christ would say to, could say to Pilate, Thou couldst have no power against me except it were given thee from above, John 19.11. In the signs of good actions, all the beings of children, the parents, all the true between the husbands and wives is to be attributed unto the Holy Spirit, whatever morality and honesty and selfishness and kindness, submission to the powers that be, and respect for law and order, which is still to be found in the world, must be traced back to the gracious operations of the Spirit. A striking illustration of his benign influence is found in 1 Samuel 10:26. Saul also went home to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God and the Spirit had touched. Men's hearts are naturally inclined to rebellion or impatient against being ruled over especially by one raised out of a mean condition among them the Lord the Spirit inclined the hearts of those men to be subject unto Saul gave them a disposition to obey him so too later the Spirit touched the heart of Saul to spare the life of David melting him to such an extent that he went that he wept for Samuel 24:16. In like manner, the Holy Spirit who gave the Hebrews favor in the eyes of the Egyptians, who hitherto had bitterly hated them, so as to give earrings to them, Exodus 12, 35, 36, 12, 12, Exodus, 20, Exodus 12, 35, 36, and convicting of sin, few seem to understand that conscience of the natural man is inoperative, unless stirred up by the Spirit as a fallen creature thoroughly in love with sin, John 3, 19, man resists. In disputes against any conviction of sin, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Genesis 6 3. Man being flesh would never have the least distaste of any iniquity unless the spirit cited those remnants of natural light would still remain in the soul. Being flesh, fallen man is perverse against convictions of the spirit. Acts 7 51. It remains so forever unless quickened and made spirit. John 3 6. In illuminating concerning divine things, fallen man is not only devoid of light and this darkness itself, as is in 5.8. He had no more apprehension of spiritual things than the beast of the field. This is very evident 
from the state of the heathen. How then shall we explain the intelligence which is found in thousands in Christendom, who yet give intelligence which who yet give no evidence that they are new creatures in Christ Jesus? They have been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Hebrews six four. Many are constrained to inquire into those scriptural subjects which make no demand on the conscience and life. Yea, many take great delight in them, just as the multitudes took pleasure in beholding the miracles of Christ, who could not endure his searching demand. So the light of the Spirit is pleasant to many of whom his conviction is grievous. Ah. Okay, well, tomorrow we'll continue in part two of chapter nine. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Hope you all have a good day.